why don't we just go down our list? And the first one will be facilitated by JJP Master using VB.net to design wikis and bots. JJ Master, are you in the room? And just a, just a quick note here, um, uh, uh, everyone is muted by default. So if you're presenting, you'll have to unmute. And also we do have a time limit. I'll keep time here, so I'll just speak out. Uh, so, put JJ. your questions in, type them into the chat. Uh, JJ, are you in the room? Yes. Wonderful. We're turning the floor over to you. Okay. Well, essentially, um, essentially, what this project is is essentially what I decided to do is I decided to try to create um, an interface. Um, so I, I decided to try to create this interface that allows me to remotely edit um, HTML files, right? So that's so basically that's what that's basically the main thing I created. I created this interface in order to edit remotely edit HTML files. Well, essentially, what I did here was essentially well, essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use this to create a wiki, which um, yeah. So for example, if I were to I guess do something like I, I guess. Wait a minute. If you want to share your screen, uh, JJ, you can do that. Okay, that's what I was actually about to ask. So here, okay. so so essentially, what this allows me to do is it's essentially just an HTML text editor. So yeah, well, essentially, my goal is to turn this thing into like an actual wiki, right? So for example, if I were to turn this into like that and close that, right? So I'm, if I could call this, um, I guess, WCNA. Okay. So then I could do that. And now this is that. So essentially, if I do that, what I can now do is I can open this, right? So essentially, right now, it's just a very basic HTML text editor. So if I, so I've now opened, okay, yeah, um, my Chrome crashed. Okay. It's, all right, close yeah. that. Okay, now let's try this again. Yeah, so this is um, what, so it just says he, which is basically what I did. But essentially my goal is to turn this into a wiki, but the way I turn this into, a, I decided to turn this into a wiki is using an FTP thing. So essentially I have determined that this is not a very good idea. So essentially, <laughs> so essentially I, I'm gonna log into the thing. Um, Um, is what's the port again? Is it this one? No. Okay. Is it this one? Um, or is it this one? Yeah, I did not. Okay. Yeah. Log into that. Okay. And then essentially this allows me to share these files. Well, essentially my goal is to, at some point use this in order to, I guess, create a wiki, right? Well, essentially. Um, the problem is I have absolutely no experience with creating with wikis or FTP in general. But essentially what I'm doing here is essentially I, it's, I'm just creating a simple FTP server. Well, essentially, first of all, I just noticed it. It's, 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 it, uses, it, uses, it uses FTPS. That's nice. Well, essentially this, this editor thing, it should... If I use this editor thing, if if it works, it'll pr probably won't. But let's just say um, a test. Okay. Actually, no. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna save it as wcna.html, right? So now, essentially, my 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 goal is to just you know actually use this as a thing. Let's just take a look. So JJ, you have about a minute and a half. I don't know if you want to take any questions about what you're working on. Okay, so yeah, let's let's do that, I guess. Let's just Okay. So yeah, you can continue to keep your screen up if you want, but are there any questions um, about building wikis in VBNet? That's People have tried to build wikis in almost every language, I think. So, uh, I don't know if um, other folks have tried this uh, what what type of application would you uh, would you like to use this what for you, what do you mean what type of application um, like um, would it 
um, so for example, what, what, what type of wiki would you like, would this be useful for? What type of content area? And uh, how would it be, you know, serve, how would it be useful where, uh, where wikis are not going now? <laughs> I mean, I don't really think that it really would be more useful than any other wiki out there. It would just, it would just exist. And as for subject area, it would probably just, I don't really know, but it would, but essentially my, my purpose here is to try to create a wiki in VB.net using an FTP server. And so far I would say it's going tolerably. Okay. Well, cool. So that's time. And so thank you very much, JJ. And I'll just say, um, we have a lot of developers in this community who have worked on various and sundry wiki software. So there'll be a chance, I think, to talk to folks who have tried different stuff um, tonight. So thank you. Thank you. Um, the next person is um, the wiki site, the Vandy site uh, project. Um, and I'm not sure who's here for that. Um, also, Lek, are you around? Oh, that's right. Yep. Awesome. Okay. And I have, you have a presentation slide. I can show that, or do you want to show that? Um, no, go ahead. That, that'd be okay. just fine. I just have the one. So, okay. All right, so, cool. Go for it. So I'm Andy Weselek. I'm the director of digital scholarship and communications at Vanderbilt university. Uh, really happy to have the opportunity to talk with you today about our project. Uh, wiki site for librarians, interactive learning pathways for information professionals. So I, I linked to the project page in the conference meta under uh, lightning talks. Um, you can find this slide there as, as well as a robust description of our project, but I'll just kind of offer, offer a, a brief overview of it and our uh, motives and uh, early progress um, here. So our project was awarded a wiki site grant uh, generously funded by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation and it aims to develop and implement interactive learning pathways for information professionals, basically to learn the fundamentals of, of Wikisite Wikidata. So, you know, we believe that there's a lot of overlap between the concerns of libraries and those of Wikidata. Um, and we believe that training information professionals to contribute to Wik Wikidata um, really is a sub substantial kind of mutual benefit here. Um, so we intend to accomplish this by developing some branching learning pathways um, using Twine. Um, and integrating uh, brief multimodal learning modules uh, within those pathways. So if you remember those choose your own adventure novels uh, from when you were a kid, uh, think that, but for learning Wikidata, basically. Um, so a little background here, this, this project really has two kind of conceptual parents as it were within the Vanderbilt libraries. Uh, first, prior to the pandemic and then really accelerated by the requirements of remote learning, my ever innovative colleague, Steve Baskoff, began, uh, began modularizing the introductory and intermediate lessons uh, he was delivering in Python and R. Um, so he was developing a conceptual map uh, of learning pathways using CodeGraph. Um, and he created a number of brief uh, video tutorials that students could interact with uh, along learning pathways of their choosing. So, Go for it. Uh, I think we uh, just got Zoom bombed here. Uh, well, thank you for, for being quick on the mute. Um, so uh, Steve essentially developed this code graph. I, I cut a bit of it out of, uh, and attached it to the slide just to give you a sense of what he was thinking here. Um, and he used this approach to essentially flip his classroom uh, to allow students to learn in self-paced ways uh, while bringing them together for live hands-on sessions that he held uh, once a week. Uh, and this, this, this approach was really a resounding success for him. So then the second kind of conceptual parent uh, to this project is uh, as a result of the pandemic lockdowns, uh, Vanderbilt Libraries organized the summer project. <laughs> dedicated, uh, dedicated to describing free research outputs uh, in Wikidata. My shit, cause I was high when I Sorry. Uh, where was I? So, um, oh, right. Okay. So as a result of the lockdowns, the team, like we, we essentially created a summer project team uh, of librarians uh, who were focused on describing VU research outputs in Wikidata. And the team members mostly trained themselves in editing Wikidata, but they were really hindered by a lack of information, uh, by very long training videos uh, or techniques that were oftentimes buried in group discussions. 
Um, so they face some like pretty basic questions um, about structure and completeness uh, in Wikidata, which couldn't easily be answered. Um, despite this learning curve though, the team in coordination with uh, the Vanderbot tool, uh, which you may have seen Steve Baskoff talk about in other venues, uh, made nearly 39,000 Wikisite uh, edits uh, over the course of the summer. So we've kind of like married these two approaches through this uh, Wikisite project. Um, and we're building on these lessons by creating similar types of uh, re interactive learning pathways that cover basic editing techniques uh, uh, and common item types. And we're currently adopting like a, a, an agile approach by mapping pretty simple pathways first with a focus on open access materials so that we can enhance participation so that um, you, know, you don't necessarily have to have access to, to library resources uh, to participate. And concurrently relying on the expertise of that Wikisite summer team uh, to both develop concept maps um, and develop scripts uh, for those video tutorials. And as this project grows, I think you know, we do intend to translate it into several different languages, certainly into Spanish, uh, potentially into Chinese and French as well. Um, and we do intend also to engage the community to contribute uh, feedback on the modules that we've created, uh, as well as relying on experts to, to contribute specialized modules and or, uh, and or pathways. So I, I have to admit that I got a little bit lost on time, but if I have time for questions. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah no, you do, you do. And uh, we'll give you uh, extra time anyway. I'm sorry about that, everyone. Um, folks slipped through here, there. Um, oh, no worries. So excitement, and, excitement on Zoom. So questions, yeah, for, for the Vanderbilt team and this uh, project, Wikisite project, which I'm excited about, by the way, uh, uh, close to my heart. <laughs> cool. Uh, so, yeah, um, so, uh, yeah, questions for folks, you can uh, put them in the chat or, again, raise your hand. And, um, and you know, I know, so you all are working on this, you, you said, Andrew, and, you know, you plan to be working on this for what, the next, what's your timetable? So I believe our, our conclusion deadline is May, I want to say. Okay. So through um, this that being said, that's the conclusion. Of, that's the conclusion of the grant period. Okay. Um, you know, I think we all kind of imagine this being a pretty organic resource that will continue yep. to grow over time. And then there's a, the, a quick question. How can we roll out these learning patterns for other academic librarians? Well, that's the, <laughs> that's the big question, right? Right, right. So um, you know, that's kind of what we're exploring now. We're, because we're using Twine, it will be openly available for other uh, academic uh, librarians to use as well um, on completion. Um, and again, we'll, we'll, I think, be engaging. You'll hear more about this as we have more kind of concrete um, visuals associated with it. Um, and we'll be looking for, for feedback um, as well as, you know, ideas on, on future directions. Awesome. And uh, Steve says that we will be making source code available on GitHub as well. Awesome. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks, folks, so much. Yeah, so next up is the State of the Internet Archive Bot with James Hare. James, are you in the room? Yes, I am. And I would like to share my screen. Go for uh, it. Let's see. my Mac that's in the bottom center of my screen. Uh, sorry, um, present, uh, have someone else present right now. I'll be back. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> sorry, next up, it could be G. Campbell talking about student success and Wikipedia's culture of communication. More lessons learned from using Wiki education. Are you in the room, G. Campbell? I am indeed. Gardner Campbell here from Virginia Commonwealth University. Let me see if I can share my screen. Looks like we're good to go. So yeah, this is kind of a sequel to the lightning talk I gave last year. I was feeling very good about my facility with Wiki education. And as often happens in a time of crisis, lockdown, uncertainty, uh, some panic on my part, as well as my students, I found out I didn't know quite as much as I thought I knew. I felt as if I were that physics teacher teaching quantum mechanics who tried to teach it once and was very frustrated. His students didn't understand. He tried again. 
They still didn't get it. So a third time he tried, and it turned out that that was what was needed for him to understand it. So that was one of the big lessons that I learned. I had more lessons to learn. And I want to talk about the moral of the story first, because I uh, want to make sure that it gets in there before I run out of time. Student success is about becoming a student. Hopefully that tracks with taking courses, doing assignments, doing projects, getting grades, passing courses, getting degrees, but it doesn't always. Students are often very good at going through the motions of what it takes to get a degree, get a good grade in a class, et cetera, but they've never really become students. They've never become part of a community of learners or become committed in any deep way. Likewise, Wikipedia success, I now firmly believe, changed my mind, is about becoming a Wikipedian. Now, hopefully that tracks with editing an article, understanding plagiarism, understanding the policies, understanding what to do to make a good article, how to submit it for review, how to do peer review, all of those things. But it's not the same as becoming a Wikipedian. That has to do with figuring out something about communication and culture. The story begins with an email just a couple of nights ago. My student writes, good evening. As you know, I was having trouble with this assignment. Yes, because the student had not turned the assignment in yet, but I did make another small addition to the article. Please let me know if that works. We corresponded and just a few moments later, the student writes, I'm still having trouble. That addition that the student had just made was deleted. So I'm feeling a little defeated. If you have any additional advice on completing this assignment, it would be greatly appreciated. And at this moment, I say to myself, do I have additional advice? That's all I've been giving you for the last semester. But even though it's the end of term, a little time goes by, cooler heads prevail. And I write back and I say, well, huh, you know, are you looking at the edit history to see why your edition was deleted? This editor is obviously watching the article and wants it to be as good as possible, et cetera, et cetera. And at that moment, it occurred to me that the gap, the thing I hadn't understood, is that the student had no idea that they would be communicated with, that there was a community, that something would happen in this assignment that wasn't confined to the course. I felt a bit sheepish at that moment. But when I got this email back from the student, okay, no, I didn't read that. And it definitely does make me feel a little better. I was encouraged. So on we went. The next morning, good morning, professor. After working yesterday, I added a few contributions that I think worked, to which I replied, good morning. I'm glad to hear it. While checking your work, I noticed that the kind editor who undid your changes to the article left you a long explanation of why he or she edited out your work. The message is on your user talk page. And it was a beautiful message. It was an extensive message. Shout out, Wally from Delbert. This was wonderful. You can't buy this kind of teaching assistance. And here it was. The student hadn't seen it. I had to kind of stumble on it. Lesson, note to self, be a Wikipedian. Understand communication. Now, the student had done all of the training modules, though, to be fair, most of them were late, and some of them had a grand total of 13 seconds spent on them and were also late. So not a poster child, perhaps, for really rigorous training. However, I went looking. Where would the student have found this out about how to become a Wikipedian in terms of communication? Well, you would think it would be on sandboxes, talk pages, and watch lists. And in fact, there is a page in this tutorial that Wiki Education provides. It's a splendid tutorial, and it's about talk pages. Behind every great Wikipedia article are Wikipedians working together. For some reason, my bad, I didn't surface this idea of Wikipedians working together. Something completely outside the student's experience, never encountered that in a class before. Why would the student know it? No good reason, and I missed it. And where would that information be? Not in sandboxes, talk pages, and watch lists, but in how to edit wiki code. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's where you find how to edit a talk page. That's where you get the video. That's where you find out that you really should respond. That's where you find out how to ping another Wikipedian. That's where you find out a great way to learn how to do this, all of which I had missed, all of which the student missed, and it's, I think, a little misplaced in a section called How to Edit Wiki Code Versus Visual Editor. There's a grand tutorial there as well. And then a quiz that does not ask the student to think about communicating at all beyond the talk page of the article, which is not really the point. 
The point is, how can you be in contact with the community, not leave another thread on a talk page? Those tend to be a bit messy in my experience, but pinging a Wikipedian and being alert to the Wikipedian who wants to reach out to you, that's where the gold is. So here are the takeaways. Wikipedia, I tell myself once again, is a communications platform that empowers meaningful collaboration over time. Its most visible and widely used collaboration is an encyclopedia, but don't be fooled, it's a communications platform. Studying policies and editing mechanics is necessary but not sufficient, and for students, quickly becomes yet another assignment. Watching Wikipedians in action and communicating with them is quite another and fundamental to deep, enduring engagement. And as a final postscript for the foundation, why don't we have a visual editor on the talk pages? I'm just curious. That's it, lessons learned. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, that's fantastic. Um, I think Rosie, we wanted to hold questions. Yeah, for we've time. got so many um, people who'd like to share. Can we hold the questions? You can write them into the chat and then we can go back through them. It, let's try that. How about James here? Are you available now, James, or we'll move on to the next one? No, I am available. Wonderful. James, you've got the floor. Do you want to share a screen? Yes. Okay. All right, uh, thank you for joining me today. Um, I would like to talk to you about the Internet Archive Bot, the work we do and the progress we've made in the last year. So Internet Archive Bot is a service operated by the Internet Archive to enhance the quality of references and links on Wikipedia articles. And in 2020, we have rescued 4 million links. Now, what does that mean? That means that there were the, a link on an article instead of linking to where it was, the website it was supposed to, it linked to an error page. We have rescued 4 million of those links so that links now go to the correct destination, bringing our total since we started doing this up to 14 million. And we currently operate on approximately 50 Wikimedia wikis. Um, this is an increase over um, the previous year by about 17 and we are working on, we are aggressively working on expanding the number of wikis we operate on. We'd like to operate on more Wikipedias, more Wiktionaries. Um, and uh, over the next year, we would like to expand to Wikimedia Commons and Wikisource to start fixing links on those wikis as well. But we don't only fix broken links, we also add links to books because when you normally cite a book, it's not, you don't normally get a link with it, maybe to a Google Books preview or an Amazon page or something like that. But we want to make editors, we want to give editors access to the actual books so that they can see that a citation in an article is what it says it is. And we have added links to more than 200,000 books in 2020, bringing our total up to 250,000 and 700,000 links to those 250,000 books. So we've gotten quite a bit done in the last year. So I've talked to you today about broken links and books, but there are other things we can do to help Wikipedia as well, which is why over the next year, we will also be working on adding links to open access journal articles so that, so that references are of an even higher quality that they are even more accessible that the information you need really is only a click away. And so I would like to part with a, um, a link here, scholarqa.archive.org is our demonstration interface for making uh, open access journal articles available based on identifiers or just doing a search. Uh, check it out, it is pretty interesting. Thanks so much, James. That was very interesting. Next is improving domain-specific articles on Wikipedia. Areas include labor, water, and slavery, historical and contemporary. Will at Wiki Education Foundation. Uh, Will, I see you in the room. Are you ready to go? And are you sharing your screen? I am sharing my screen. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can. 
Awesome. Um, hi, everybody. Sorry we can't be in person. Great to see you all here. Um, I've got a quick presentation for you today. That's a call to action. Um, let me just start this presentation. So I'm from Wiki Education. I, I don't run the program that um, Gardner was mentioning earlier, but it is part of what we do. Um, we have a couple different programs uh, where we work with professionals and postgraduates uh, with editing Wikipedia and Wikidata. I've been doing a lot of Wikidata stuff lately, but I come to you today wearing my Wikipedia hat. Uh, and I want to talk about this program at the very bottom called Visiting Scholars. Some of you might have heard of it before, but it's kind of our, like our, our secret program that uh, has a really cool uh, set of people working on it uh, and has big impact. Um, so quick overview of this program. Um, what it does is it connects experienced Wikipedians with uh, colleges and universities across the US and Canada. Um, these universities typically select a theme or an area that they want to focus on that reflects uh, the holdings of their archives or libraries. Uh, and the Wikipedian is granted access for some time. It could be a year, it could be a multi-year deal, um, but it's a good chunk of time where you can really dive into a specific topic area. Um, and it's really fun and it's, it's a great way to improve specific areas on, on Wikipedia. Uh, so just uh, some quick numbers for you. Impact over the 19 visiting scholars. They've edited some 4,000 articles uh, with almost 100 new articles with 2 billion views, which is ridiculous. Uh, that's just a lot of uh, impact uh, because these are high uh, value articles. A lot of people look at them, they're highly read. So it takes a lot of expertise to improve them in very specific ways. So I'm coming to you because we have a new position that's open and we've struggled filling it this year because of uh, the pandemic. So I thought I'd come to you specifically because you are all well-connected people who know um, Wikipedians and are Wikipedians. So this uh, position is at the University of Michigan. You don't have to be affiliated with it. You don't have to live in Michigan. You have, don't have to have gone to University of Michigan. Um, you just get access to all of their cool stuff at all of their uh, 20 libraries. Uh, and they know what they're doing and they have access to a lot of uh, specific resources. The themes for this particular position, there are three, um, slavery and its aftermath. So this includes contemporary slavery and involuntary or servitude, um, the future of work. So if you're interested in labor, labor policy, labor laws, uh, or water equity and security um, are the three themes. They're willing to host multiple scholars. Uh, so if you know multiple people who like these areas and wanna contribute, uh, send them our way. Um, and like I said, uh, they're very eager to fill this. We've been looking for a while and had uh, a couple leads, but nothing's worked out yet. Um, so the way that you can apply is there's this link. I'll be sure to paste it in the chat and probably post it on Meta afterward. Um, this presentation is also up on Commons. I'll share that link too. Or you can just email me and I'll be sure to give you all of the details over and over again. So that's just will at wikiedu.org. Um, and I think that's all there is. Stick around if there are questions there, um, but thank you everybody. Thanks awesome. so much, Will. Next up we have um, MedMed14, who's going to speak about an overview of the 2020 projects from the Wikicred initiative. Uh, are you in the room, MedMed14? Yeah, hi. Uh, do you see me? Can you hear me? This is Ahmed. We can hear you. Would you like to share your screen? I do not have a presentation. I'm just going to try to uh, make it um, one minute uh, elevator pitch style. So Sounds hi, good. everyone. I'm very glad to be uh, with you guys. This is my first uh, wiki conference. Very happy to be here uh, with me today. Um, project leads from uh, Project We uh, funded and supported through the Wikicred uh, initiative. Wikicred basically is a partnership uh, between Hacks Hackers, an organization that seeks to build trust um, in the media and information ecosystem um, in North America and other parts of the world, and uh, with uh, community members like yourselves. Um, yeah, uh, we do two things. So we do uh, micro grants uh, that range from $250 to $10,000, where we support uh, wiki uh, projects that aim to support credibility. Uh, and we also hold a monthly meetup um, where we present some of these projects. Uh, we also debate other uh, topics as well uh, at the intersection of trust, credibility, um, and Wikipedia in uh, general, um, credibility in the information ecosystem. Uh, I'm going to um, open the floor to uh, other uh, project uh, leads with me so that they can talk about their projects. Uh, I'd like to introduce Amelia, who's working on an exciting project. Uh, it's called the UX of Credibility on Wikipedia. Um, 
just go ahead, Amelia. Uh, hello, my name is Amelia. I'm currently an undergraduate student at the University of Washington, and I'm working with Professor Amy Zhang on this Wiki UX project. The focus of our project is bringing um, Wikipedia articles and the data from that to other places on the web and how we can introduce credibility signals around that. Um, so we will be um, our specific project that we're focusing on is how can we bring citation standards and um, Wikipedia articles onto YouTube, as well as how we can look at the content um, around YouTube and Wikipedia together and kind of stop the spread of misinformation through bringing credibility signals into it. So yeah, that's our project. Uh, feel free to contact me if you'd like any more information on the project. Thanks. With us as well, uh, Monica and Ember. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Monica Shangle-Jones. We've crossed paths before. Um, nice to see everyone here. And I'm here with Amber Burson and hi. our, hi, and our co-lead, um, Melissa Tamani out of Peru. We're working on reading together multilingual communities and uh, reliable sources, which is an art and feminism project funded by Wikicred to analyze the reliable source guidelines in English, French, and Spanish, and the ways in which they are enacted. Um, so I'll pass the baton to Amber to give you a little more detail about our project. Yeah, so we are uh, looking both at the uh, reliable source guidelines and the content policies in English, French, and Spanish, and seeing how they overlap. We've been um, We've been doing lots of research, of course, but we also opened the floor to talking to Wikipedians around the world. We hosted three town halls, uh, English, French, and Spanish again, and now we are in the process of writing a white paper. We've been looking mm -hmm. for case studies um, of what we think, you know, demonstrate the difficulty certain communities have in um, working with the current reliability guidelines. So if you want to talk to us about this, we'd love to hear from you. Um, I can drop a contact link into the chat. We don't want to take up too much time though. So <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to say too that this is a powerful project and we're grateful for Wikicred for funding this project. Um, it's I think going to be of relevance to many of us in the movement and um, we will be, as we're analyzing our work, we'll be releasing a white paper with some of our recommendations on how we might enact change on the reliable source guidelines um, and how they affect uh, ways in which sources are interpreted. So it's nice to be here. Nice to see everyone. Hopefully you can see me. Um, and thank you, Ahmed. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Monica. With us as well, Gabriel from a project called Wiki What's This? Go, go, Gabriel. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Thanks for giving me a little time here, Ahmed. Um, so we got a Wikicred grant for Wiki What's This, which the goal of this project was to create a page recommendation model and a browser extension that would allow people to get context about what they're reading online by giving them the ability to highlight any text they see in their browser and get recommended Wikipedia related Wikipedia pages. Um, so it's an ongoing project, um, still in progress. Um, we contributed a lot of parsing code. If you're interested in that sort of thing, um, you can find it on GitHub. And um, with the grant, we were able to hire an undergrad summer student who um, had a lot of fun and was a pleasure to work with and was able to present at one of the Wikicred uh, demo hours. And um, you can see that video on one of the Wikicred blog posts as well. Happy to um, take any questions in the chat as well. Thank you. Um, thank you all so much. That's awesome. And that's like, what, four for the price of one. That's really yeah. great to see yeah, this yeah. overview. So. Um, thank you, everyone. I think the next one up is Thomas, who will be speaking about bridging the academia with, Academia Wikipedia divide with wiki journals. Are you in the room, Thomas? Yes, I am. Um, so this is just going to be a, a little bit of an overview and an update for those who haven't come across the wiki journals before. And I'll do a bit of a share screen to show my slides. So hopefully they are coming up now.
Not yet. Not yet? Not, uh, there we How about go. that? Okay. All right, brilliant. Yep. Um, so the concept behind these was, you know, at, uh, as mentioned, trying to bridge that strange divide between the Wikipedia and academic worlds. Uh, and the way that the Wikijournals project has been going about that has been through building a publishing group of several peer-reviewed academic journals that integrate very strongly with Wikipedia. So there's the original one was Wikijournal of Medicine, and then that was subsequently joined by the Wikijournals of Science and of Humanities, and they all share a joint preprint server where people draft their content. And I'll focus on the areas in which there's integration with Wikipedia in this, but bear in mind that they also do a lot of um, standalone article publishing. So I think the easiest way to look at it is to kind of separate it out between um, the different uh, quality levels of articles that already exist within Wikipedia. Because when the article on Wikipedia is either completely absent or is stub or start class, um, typically authors will write an article for the wiki journals completely from scratch and it'll go through peer review it'll be published as a stable citable version of record with a doi etc um, and then the content from that article will get integrated into the wikipedia page of the same name interestingly the most challenging middle ground is this b and c level articles um, so what we have recommended to authors who are interested in submitting articles to the wiki journals on those topics is to start with the existing Wikipedia article and update and overhaul it. Um, but actually, we do have one case where the article was um, previously so flawed that, again, the authors essentially rewrote the entire thing by the end of it. Uh, and then finally, there's that kind of that top slice of Wikipedia articles that exist, which is those featured articles and to a lesser extent, the good articles. Um, and the wiki journals accept Wikipedia as a valid preprint server. So high quality Wikipedia articles have been submitted in a way that's very analogous to good article review and featured article review um, to the wiki journals where we're able to organize external expert academic feedback and criticism of them um, basically from the point of view of people who have written a wikipedia article and said hey i think this is as good as any review on the topic i've ever read i think it would uh, survive academic peer review and of course again in those situations after it's gone through peer review the recommendations and updates are then integrated and filtered back into the wikipedia page Additionally, there have been some article sections that have gone through this process. Um, so one example is gene structure. Uh, another example is um, epidemiology of hepatitis D, I think, uh, where the Wikipedia article on gene and on hepatitis D had a particular section that was underdeveloped. And so the authors of these journal articles wrote those from scratch and those were integrated. Uh, and after publication, they were integrated into those Wikipedia pages. And the final kind of Wikipedia integrated aspects that has been done are these partner articles where um, someone reading the Wikipedia page might be interested in something more technical and more in-depth, kind of the opposite of simple English Wikipedia. And so we're able to put together these little partner articles that can go alongside that. Um, I forgot to mention the, the lacking images aspect. We also encourage academics to submit image reviews, which are essentially um, either a single really good summary um, schematic or a whole gallery of images that again go through peer review and publication and those images can then be used to illustrate uh, Wikipedia articles. So for example, until recently there wasn't at all an image of cell disassembly during apoptosis, which is a pretty basic uh, and fundamental biological process. And there was a group of um, academics who had been using this uh, particular image as their introduction slide on all of their conference talks on the topic. And we're like, well, yeah, that's fine. We can just write uh, an article to go around that and submit that to the journal. And now it's used across a half dozen related Wikipedia pages. Um, as I mentioned, there's a whole load of different standalone types of articles that the Wiki journals also do that aren't intended for Wikipedia integration. Um, but I will skip to the final slide just in case anyone wants to see the kind of 45-minute uh, version of this. You can go to um, this QR code or this link, and I'll stick it in the chat as well. Um, and there's a, a longer slide deck and a recording of a longer version of this talk. Awesome. Thank you so much. 
Yeah, Thank put, you. Those, put those links in chat. So next we have Raleri02 speaking on Semantic Lab and Wikibase, Collaborative Modeling and Graphing Women in Jazz. Raleri, are you in the room? I am. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me? Yep, oh, we can. Okay. Super. Okay, so let me share my presentation. And I've added the slides into the chat if people want to follow along. Okay, so sorry, I don't typically present in Zoom, so this is all right. So you can see my slides, yes? Yep. Okay, great. So I'm just um, going to give an update on what's happening at Semantic Lab and our use of Wikibase. Um, I call this collaborative project data modeling and graphing the history of women in jazz. So um, some of you may have heard Matt Miller talk. He's a director at Semantic Lab at Pratt and he has been talking about um, how to install Wikibase. Um, so we've been um, working with, uh, we've, we're a group of librarians and archivists, and um, our goal is to work with cultural heritage resources and try to provide enhanced access to those re resources. So our um, original uh, group of materials that we worked with uh, were a group of um, interviews with jazz musicians. And what we did is, we went into the content of those those um, interviews and harvested it out um, names and tried to create a network graph of um, acquaintanceship between all these jazz musicians. So the idea that someone mentioned someone in a jazz interview meant that they knew of that person. And in the past, we were aligning all of our names to um, Library of Congress or Music Brains or DBpedia, which was the structured um, data version of Wikipedia articles. But more recently, we've really been focusing on using Wikidata. And um, so currently what we're trying to do is um, there was an initial ingest of all our legacy data into our Wikibase instance. And right now what we're trying to do is to start to model the data um, across different projects so that different queries can be asked of the data. So we have very, very different projects. There are some people who are working on something called EAT, which is Experiments in Art and Technology, collaborations between artists and technology scientists, and Linking Lost Jazz Shrines, which is a little bit of an extension of the original Link Jazz project um, that focuses on Brooklyn jazz musicians, um, uh, and the interviews are held by Wigsville Heritage. Um, and also we're focusing um, on women in jazz and our use case is the international sweethearts of rhythm. So all of this data that's derived from these archival and bibliographic resources is being put into our Wikibase. So um, I just wanted to mention that uh, there's a lot of uh, meetings and decision-making that occurs in order to decide what kind of properties we should use, um, whether we can make the properties a little more generic so that um, it can span multiple projects so that when people start to query our data via the Sparkle endpoint, that they can catch more um, data in their query and filter down on the data. And what I wanted to show is that, so our work is really about adding to Wikidata. Um, so a lot of the work, for example, that I'm doing with women in jazz is um, adding a lot of people, adding a lot of musicians that um, uh, aren't already in Wikidata to Wikidata and then adding them also to our Wikibase and interlinking that Wikidata um, record with what we have in our Wikibase. Um, the reason why we're using a Wikibase is because we tend to have more granular project data on a Wikibase. For example, from the Legacy Link Jazz project, we have a lot of interview data, um, and that's data that wouldn't necessarily uh, fit well with uh, Wikidata. So one of the great things that's happening with our data at this point um, a long process and we're continuing to shape up our data in order to allow queries 
But in ingesting the um, legacy data, we've also added now uh, gender data. So we can query our data in interesting ways. Uh, we had an original question years ago about our data, whether women jazz musicians as a whole mention more women um, than men jazz musicians mention women. And now, like as of this week, we're able to actually query um, sort of the, the distribution of gender across people's interviews. Um, it's um, moving forward, we're going to continue to look at this and uh, write queries in order to be able to um, ask more complicated questions of our data. So for example, many years ago and it was kind of like what we want to be doing with our data at link jazz um, and now with semantic lab and now with the wikibase instance we actually can um, sparkle query the data and start to get these kind of um, more textured responses from those queries so for example if you wanted to know uh, what different Mus what different musicians who were interviewed had to say about Mary Lou Williams, you would be able to actually get those textual snippets um, and see if just get a sense of what different um, musicians had to say about Mary Lou Williams. And so we're shaping up the data. We're trying to create more documentation on our data models and properties and about our experience actually doing this and sharing out about our work through publications and blog posts. Thank you so much. That's really uh, wow. Exciting. Yeah. Thank you so much, Karen. I think I can say last but not least is Wiki of Historical Aeronautics and Aviation with Econo Terms. Are you in the room, Econ Terms? Yeah. This is Peter. I'm going to share my screen. Yep, you should be able to share get, share your screen, which will um, stop Karen's share there. Yep. Rosie, I just wanted to check. Was I too late signing up, or is mine? Um, am I able to talk after this? Let's. Uh, Go ahead, Phoebe. Oh, I'm sorry. I have some logistical stuff to do after this, Pete. So sit tight. Uh, uh, um. So yeah. Go ahead, Peter. Is my wiki page visible? It is. OK, I'm going to show a few wiki pages real quick. I'm doing research on invention and how startup industries appear and what came before. How did they come to be? And it's, it's turned out to be the most useful things to focus very strictly on the invention of airplanes and the appearance of airplane companies. I use charts of this kind, counting patents uh, associated with aeronautics and aviation uh, from before and shortly after there's an airplane. There's exponential growth in the activity here for many years until about here when there's known to be a functioning airplane. And then there's this huge boom and then a crash in World War I. So there's a lot going on. We want to think about what institution is helping to make that happen. And there's a boom also in scientific publications, the new clubs of aeronauticists and companies, letters between inventors. This wiki has a page for each of those kinds of things. A lot of questions would be associated with what technologies were they working on and how quickly did they shift to the idea of a fixed wing? So there's a big history to be told and it depends on a micro history of each patent and each inventor that is complicated and statistics intervening. And there's a lot of error. There's ambiguity, there's a lot missing, and there's a lot that isn't classified in the way we would now wanna classify it to understand. Wikis are good for that. I'm now gonna show a few pages. Hopefully you now see patent, the British patent. Let me squeeze this a bit, okay. We can really discuss this particular patent. What's it about? Or what you know? What hard issues were there? And and is it a, a, a refiling of one that was already in Austria? We can copy a diagram from it. We can link to sources about it on this wiki page. And then there's a table which is associated with the extension called Cargo that lists many things that are the same for each patent. That table is one that I can invent. 
So each wiki page for a patent will also have a row in this table, a, a name for it. That's the wiki page name, an inventor, all these various details. Enormous, grim detail about each patent. A lot of it's still empty. Um, and you see some inventors are, are, are red, not filled in. Others are blue, they are filled in. We can also classify a patent by tagging it with particular words. These are aircraft where the person flaps their wing. There were many attempts to invent along this line. Here's a list. Each of these will link back to uh, a patent page. They're classified now in this advanced category system where many patents are but there are also patent classification systems of the time and we wanna see how those are adapting. In each case, because it's a table, we can do a kind of query that generates a list of everything in that category. Likewise, anything we've categorized as an ornithopter shows up. So we're not trapped into using the official system, we can invent our own. Here's an article, a scientific uh, type of article. Um, but somewhat amateurish, it's not published in a peer reviewed scientific journal, but they're studying the problem of how to make a helicopter. Here too, we have a table and a row for each of many thousands of publications and we can copy these, uh, the pictures in and we can link to some that are actually in commons directly in this wiki on my own site. Here's an inventor, an important one. We can use footnotes of the regular media wiki kind his patents, this is an automatic list. If we add another one, it'll show that. His tremendous number of publications. And then a wiki page for each of any letter he sent that is known to exist. So we could drill into that kind of detail and then produce various reports, including those lists, but even a chart that shows we have 5,000 French patents and almost 5,000 US patents and so forth. The numbers of these various objects are large. This is not something people fully understand. We've got 15,000 patents and I'm still uploading publications from bibliographies, not uh, just entries uh, describing them. Um, and some of this will eventually go into Wikidata. I think Wikidata should, some form of Wikidata should hold every patent ever, at least to the extent of having a row about it. All right, Peter, I'm gonna ask you to wrap up here. Okay, it's good for primary research, flexible, and data science at the same time. I'm done. Thanks, Peter. So great. Thank you're you. next. Yeah, so um, I don't know about you, Rosie. I am blown away by these lightning talks. I feel like uh, the breadth of um, projects and creativity and outreach in our community is really um, extraordinary. So I just wanted to catch you all um, while we're still on time and then we can circle back to you, Pete, and um, potentially questions. Um, a couple logistical notes. So first I want to apologize, especially apologize to our early uh, presenters for the disruption. Um, we are going to try and do something about it and uh, for tomorrow. And to that end, if you all could make sure to actually register for the conference so we can email you. Um, the registration link is right at the top of the meta page, which I just put in chat. It's register.wcna.wiki. Um, we may end up emailing Zoom links to folks uh, rather than having them on meta. So that's point one. Um, second point is uh, uh, after this, there was a there was a break um, uh, on the schedule. Is a break on the schedule, although people are welcome to sort of hang out and chat and go to the lounge. And then um, there's a we wanted to make a lounge time uh, at um, at at eight p.m. Eastern. And again, that's going to be on this other platform that I know some people have already experimented with called Wonder. Um, and we we're just talking that would be a great place to ask each other questions about these talks too. So I'm excited about it. I hope we all try it out. It is experimental. It might crash, but I think we should try it out. I'll try it out. 
Um, so uh, that's all. And I saw a note, Mark. I know some people were stuck in the waiting room too. That's related to trying to like get uh, our trolls under control here. So um, we'll try and get all that sorted by tomorrow. Um, but do go ahead and register if you haven't. So next, let's have Pete Forsythe talk to us about uh, news on Wiki. Pete, are you still in the room? Awesome, here we go. You're muted. You're still muted, Pete, sorry. Um. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't realize I was still on mute. <laughs> um, so uh, I just have a, a brief presentation here. I believe my partner, uh, Sherry Antoine is, is here. And so please, Sherry, feel free to jump in. Uh, we just put this together uh, pretty last minute. Um, so we're gonna be having a session tomorrow around News on Wiki. Uh, it's a edit-a-thon session from two to 4 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we'd love for you to join in with us. Uh, but what I wanted to do here is kind of give a, a bit of a view of like the, pro the, the issue that kind of gives this work some importance. So this page you see on your screen, Red House, Red House Eviction Defense, is possibly something you've seen in the news in the last few days. Uh, here in Portland, where I live, this is a, um, it's a site where there's a uh, uh, African American family is in the process of an eviction, and so there's been a protest around it, and there's a standoff that very suddenly exploded into the national news. Um, and so, in this particular case, this, there's there's only one thorough news report that I'm aware of about this situation that predated this week, that was from last month, um, where a, a black-owned newspaper, a local black-owned newspaper called the Portland Observer covered the story in some depth. And when something like this is really is evolving quickly um, and people all over the country are hearing about it, there's a lot of interest, there's a lot of legitimate interest in whether they're hearing news from legitimate sources or not. So whether they're a Wikipedia editor or just a, you know, a regular person who sees something in their social media feed, if they see a story in the Portland Observer, they've never heard of the Portland Observer before, they're gonna wanna know what it is. So probably what they're going to do is a web search on it. And so in this case here, we've got the, this is actually a DuckDuckGo search, but this is true of Google or Bing or pretty much any, uh, any web search engine. On the right hand side, you will often see an info box or a knowledge panel uh, that kind of gives you a summary of it. So it's independent of, it's, it's not the website itself over here on the left. It's, it's something that, you know, presents uh, factual information and can kind of help ground someone in like, is this a real newspaper? What is this thing I'm looking at? And if you notice, its source is Wikipedia. So generally speaking, whether or not Wikipedia has an article on something, especially a newspaper, is going to impact whether or not a search engine displays that information, which really has a tremendous amount of reach beyond even just Wikipedia's reach. The reach of, of search engine results is pretty tremendous. So in this case, the Portland Observer, we've had an article on Wikipedia since 2016. It's not the longest or more most in-depth article that you've ever seen, but it is pretty well sourced. It's got nine independent references. Uh, they're all footnoted, they're linked. So if someone's really interested in digging into it, they can get into that pretty, pretty easily. Uh, they also might see as they're looking at it, you know, they might have noticed the name of the author of the article and they might see, oh yeah, that's the editor of the paper. So it's not just some freelancer, it's actually, you know, someone who's, who's pretty deeply connected with the paper. So it's really gonna help someone make that quick assessment of like, is this worth reading? Is this something that I should consider reliable? Um, so our campaign, News on Wiki, is to write many, many articles about local papers that are sort of at this scale. We're not looking to write the best, most thorough articles. We're trying to get a foothold on Wikipedia for a lot of local newspapers. In this phase of it, which runs through February, we're really trying to focus on black owned newspapers, uh, also newspapers based in the state of Washington and newspapers with a focus on the Caribbean. So we came up with three uh, sort of different areas of kinds of newspapers to focus on 
uh, so that we can really dig down in those areas. But of course, we're, we're interested in working with anyone who wants to work on local papers, even if they don't fit into those, uh, those exact buckets. Um, one of the things that's been really, uh, really helpful to us is working with university uh, professors to make a Wikipedia assignment in their class. So one that we worked with, uh, just in the last couple of weeks, we've worked with uh, a professor at uh, New York University's Los Angeles campus, uh, and also with Christy Roschke, who is uh, at Arizona State University. So I've got a couple of quick examples uh, from Christy Roschke's class. Uh, this here is the New York Beacon. This is a brand new article that one of her students created. So as you can see, it's, it's really well on its way. Um, gives some good solid information to start with. And as you can imagine over time, uh, other, now that this article exists, other Wikipedians, other people are gonna happen across it and they're gonna find something else they can add to it. So what we often see with something like this is, yeah, it starts with just four footnotes, but in a few months that could easily be six or eight footnotes. You know, it could easily be like a, a eight or 10 paragraph article, start to develop a history section, things like that. So just by starting it is often a really good way to stimulate it growing into something bigger. Uh, and another example also from one of Christie's students is the Dallas Post Tribune. This one is the largest black owned newspaper in Northern Texas. So it's kind of crazy to me that, um, you know, that a newspaper of this scale, you know, it was founded in 1947. It's been around for a good long time. There were plenty of independent references available just even to do a basic article like this, but there wasn't even a Wikipedia article about it. Uh, so now there is. So again, if, we, if you'd like to join in this kind of work, uh, please join our session tomorrow. This is our homepage on, on Wiki. You can also just sign up, add your name to our list of participants and, uh, and kind of read through to get a sense of how we're doing this. One last thing I wanted to just briefly mention too is that Wikidata is a huge part of what we do. Um, and this is one of the reasons for it. This is a map of the state of Washington. This is a map that's based off of Wikidata and it shows us where there are newspapers that, so basically every point on this map is a newspaper that Wikidata knows about and every green or yellow point is one that has a Wikipedia article. And so this is one of the ways that we're able to track our progress and kind of you know, keep track of all the, the different articles. So um, there's plenty of maintenance work to do on Wikidata as well that kind of meshes with how things go on Wikipedia. Um, Sherry, I'm not sure if you made it into the call. Are you here? Do you wanna add any words? Well, I think you're, we're pretty much at time. For at time, time, okay. Talk. So, oh. um, but thank you very much for that, Pete. And, thank you. Uh, yeah, awesome. I'm looking forward to the work tomorrow. Um, All right. So I think we've gone through everyone who's in the queue for today, Friday, uh, to present a lightning talk. Those who um, are interested now in presenting themselves on Saturday, there's still time, Go hop on over there, go to our page on Meta and just scroll down, click the link and put down what your session will be for Saturday. In the meantime, we're gonna keep this room open till 15 after the hour for um, Q and A. And then it's break time, folks. You can either go walk your dog, eat your supper, um, or, head on over to the lounge over in wonder.me. If you go to our page on Meta, it's at the top center. There's a link for lounge. Uh, maybe we can, someone can uh, paste the link into our chat also. And our official reception does not start until 8 p.m. Eastern. It will run at least for a couple of hours. Don't miss it. You're going to love it. This is going to be a lot of fun, I think. But right now, we've got seven minutes left for Q&A. And so um, I'm scrolling through the chat looking for questions, but if anyone's got one right at the, um, that you can think of right away, um, speak up. <laughs> yeah, you can um, put it in the chat or um, unmute yourself. And we still have most of our presenters. So here's a question from Gabriel um, for the Internet Archive bot. I guess that's just for James. Are you aware of any good tools for? going between internet archive URLs and original URLs. Um, James or? Oh uh, yeah, hi, this is Mark. Um, yeah, hey. Hey, Mark. I, I guess I don't understand the question. You just take out the part to the left. That, that's all. It's that's like, that's what web... you could do for most of them. But I, I um, was trying to do this for a big long list and I found there's like seven or eight different um, <clears throat> starting 
domains so, for like so ahead. there's web.archive.org slash um and then there's archive.org slash so feel free to email me mark at archive.org any specifics and i'd be happy to follow up okay this, that'd be great this sounds like a perfect lounge discussion to uh yeah get in <laughs> you, you, can share table screens. In the you can share screens in the lounge because it's virtual you know so okay cool. got awesome. a lightning talk table in the lounge where lightning talk people can go head over and ask questions and get answers um it, but any other questions we can ask here rapidly i have one benoit from canada uh, i have a question for uh, is it pete from the internet archive not pete um uh, james or myself james sorry um it, it was for James the uh, because uh, I was interested in the, your uh, Internet Archives, but uh, here in Canada, in the province of Alberta, we have a teacher at the University of Alberta who is interested in harvesting the pictures that are open, uh, not open source, but in the public domain. Is this something that you're heading? Yeah, so we actually, so we have, there's about 56 million uh, uh, images, uh, objects in uh, Wiki Commons. Uh, I know that we've archived at least 42 million of them in the Wayback Machine. Uh, we just actually did that work this week uh, to understand that better. There's also, a, and we'll, we'll get the rest of them, there's about, about 27 million. There's also about a half a billion um, that have been referenced in uh, Creative Commons uh, search of Creative Commons licensed uh, media, and we'll, we'll get all of those too. Once again, specifics about any of this, mark at archive.org. Okay. Merci, Monsieur Graham. Sure. Any other questions for our Lightning Talk presenters? Um, I have a quick question for, uh, for Gardner. Um, have you, you know, are you working with other faculty like have you found it easy to share these lessons that you've learned as you teach like how has uh, that gone for you are you are uh, you really just doing it as a solo pretty, endeavor pretty much solo people in my department know i'm doing this and uh, certainly i outline it in great detail when i put in my annual reports but there hasn't been a lot of uptake and it's interesting you would ask because when I was doing the presentation last year and I was talking a little more generally because I didn't know as much about just the interesting culture of Wikipedia, uh, someone from uh, Wiki Education said, yeah, we used to do a module on that, but faculty didn't like that. And this is one of the reasons I found Thomas's presentation so interesting. There is this odd lingering faculty, um, I don't know, it ranges from apathy to kind of mild uh, revulsion, I guess, at the idea of working seriously with Wikipedia. And it's something that I think we can get past, but it's uh, something I found a little daunting. A lot of academics' um, impressions of Wikipedia have been set in stone since about like 2001 to 2005, and they don't appreciate how different the world of Wikipedia is, you know, kind of post like 2007, 2008. I think it's also, I think that's right. I think it's also true that there's a certain amount of web literacy that you need to be able to understand the way Wikipedia operates. I'm very glad of that. I would never want to see Wikipedia become an app, uh, but uh, faculty don't have a great deal of web literacy. Uh, they never have uh, seen it as a priority, which I think is uh, part of how we've gotten into this bad fix with the web, uh, and it's sad. To be fair, I think we, there's... we used to talk about librarians not liking Wikipedia either, but we, you know, we have examples like Vandy site and the Link Jazz project about all this MBA work that's happening. So cultures can shift, but go ahead. Sorry, I cut. I, th I think there's, a, there's another issue too, which really goes back to what we were doing originally with the, um, the Wiki education program is sort of the, the difference from an educator's perspective in thinking about whether like, like if the central question is, is Wikipedia a reliable source for use in a research paper is a very different question from, is there something of educational value that can be had by participating in Wikipedia? Um, and so I think, you know, anything that, that can, can urge educators to shift towards that second 
question without having to have a definitive answer to the first one or without having to put the focus on the first one is like, you know, if, if Wikipedia is a large participatory community, there's all kinds of stuff you can do there that there's like really no other way you can do, you know, without like, you know, it's, it's, it's a resource that can allow you to expose your students to feedback and standards and things like that in a sort of real world setting that you wouldn't really be able to do in a classroom otherwise. So, well, and, then, and then like, I think once your students are familiar with it, then you can have a more robust discussion about what is the value of it as a, as a reference material, right? Like, like how do we evaluate its quality um, instead of just making it a black and white discussion? Good or bad. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly the conversation to have. What I'm trying to do is extend the time for that conversation from about the first 15 seconds before the door slams shut <laughs> to maybe a minute where we could actually uh, look at a couple of things. And that, that's been a challenge, at least at, at the school where I am right now. I think uh, it probably varies depending on the culture of the local uh, university as well. If I can just jump in here, um, I don't want to cut anybody off. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I ran Ohio State's uh, student editing group, and something that helped with us a lot is if you just get one person with that foot in the door um, who has some experience, a lot of other people are much more likely to listen to you if you come in with, hey, here's this other professor, or if you just have some background at the university um, that, you know, hey, I did this edit-a-thon with the Spanish and Portuguese department, what about Chinese? Uh, people like that, when, when you have those connections, that helps to like uh, Gardner, Gardner, just say that right. <laughs> um, as he said, you know, just get the foot in the door. Um, and I, I think if you come in with the right message and some of that, I, I think a lot of people are willing to, to at least listen <laughs> for a little bit. They may not actually do it. Um, but they're certainly willing, especially like researchers and stuff whose research isn't well known. You know, you come and say, hey, there's a way that your paper that you write 10 papers on 30 people see it. Now everybody can see it. So. Anne-Marie, we're going to let you have, have the last word. Well, the last word, except for Phoebe and me having the last word. It's time to close this room, but not to end the conversation. I just put the um, link, if you will, into the chat. Just type lounge.wcna.wiki or go to the page on Meta. And that link is right up at the top of our page on Meta and carry on this conversation there. There's a table waiting for you. And there's other folks who want to join in the conversation who are waiting for you. Alternatively, go have dinner, go take a walk, and we'll see you at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you want to wear a funky hat or something like that, you're welcome. Bring, bring your drink and bring maybe some cheese because we're going to have some fun. That's it for us. And the lounge, the lounge platform is just going to stay open so you can head over there and it'll carry on till, till 8 Eastern. Um, Thanks, thank you Senator. all. Thank you all so much. This was really fun. All right. Ciao.